New in 3DS Max 2012 Subscription Advantage Pack is the ability for the Active Shade Interactive Rendering Window to support the iRay rendering engine. Let's take a look at that. Let's go ahead and open the Render Setup dialog box. Let's choose Active Shade from the Assign Renderer rollout. So let's go ahead and change the Active Shade render to the iRay renderer, and we'll say OK and activate Active Shade. And then once we initialize the Active Shade viewport, iRay will render uh, the view of our camera. So there is our iRay render. And now the, the, the principle behind Active Shade is that this is now a live connection to the view. So if I change anything in the view, it's automatically updated in the image. And we can do this with the iRay render because it's a, it's a GPU-based rendering engine that's really fast and highly accurate. It's a photometrically accurate renderer, so we can take advantage of great-looking materials and lights in uh, a very, very fast uh, feedback loop. So, for example, if I have this cup selected and I reposition the cup in, at any time, uh, the image is automatically updated to reflect the change. Since I'm looking through a camera, if I change the camera position at any time, the image is quickly updated to reflect the changes in the, uh, in the change of position in the camera. If I go over to the rendering dialog box and I opened up either advanced parameters or hardware resources, you can see we have some settings that we can adjust for the iRay render. I've set my uh, rendering iterations to unlimited. So as I continue to work, as long as nothing changes in the scene that, uh, that affects the rendering engine, this will continue to refine and improve. But you can see just after a couple seconds, we really get enough information to tell us if we're on the right track in terms of our uh, materials and lighting and object position. And that uh, really kind of goes to what Active Shade supports. It, you, can, uh, uh, you can change geometry position or translation, camera position, lighting changes, and material changes. We'll take a look at the material changes in a second. Down here, you'll notice that you can actually choose uh, the uh, GP resources that are being um, thrown at this Active Shade window. Currently, I have a, a Tesla in here. I also have a Quadra 6000 that's currently being used by Windows. If I check that on, it'll be added to the computational queue for this window. I also am using three of my six cores on my processor to update the window. So I can, I'm getting some very, uh, very fast processing that's giving me, um, that's continually refining itself and giving me this great looking image. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the material updates. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close my rendering dialog box and I'm just going to scroll over to this vase over here and I have a couple of books in the background as well. And I'm currently using standard materials in those but I want to take advantage of iRay Renderer and use the Arch Design material. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my Slate Material Editor and I have a couple of things that I'm working on. I'll go over to the vase first. I already have the vase set up with a standard material. You recall here's what the camera is looking at. Here's what the active shade window is looking at. I actually, um, all I need to do is just make sure my object is selected so that when I assign the material, it goes to the right spot. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click on my material or right click in my view here. I'm going to choose a mental ray material, an arch design material. And then I'm just going to pipe some things from the original material into this. I don't actually have to uh, destroy the old material at all if I want to switch back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the noise, which is going into the bump map and put it right in there. I'm just going to double click this material and copy the diffuse color to the clipboard. And then I'm going to double click the arch design material and paste the color right there. And I'll choose uh, one of the preset finishes. I'm just going to choose a highly uh, glossy finish. And once I do that, all I have to do is assign the material to the selection and it's assigned and the active shade rendering window immediately updates with the new material in there. So I'll go ahead and do the same thing with the handle. I'll just select that, right click and say assign material to selection and it automatically gets updated. Likewise with the books that are in the background I just want to take advantage of the arch design material for that so I'll go ahead and select the back spine of the book which is the only thing that we're going to change here and I have the book spine texture here the original one so I'm just going to repipe some things over so I'll grab our diffuse image and I'll also grab our bitmap, which is being used in our glossiness map and also in our bump map. And we'll put it right there and it automatically updates. And you can see the inter interactive rendering window continues to refine itself as we add the textures and reposition itself. So it's a very fast and easy way to work 
Um, having the iRay renderer up live while I'm working um, really kind of closes feedback loops, makes things a lot easier to see uh, faster. Um, you know, I can gauge how my materials are looking. I can gauge the staging of my objects uh, with relative position to my cameras and lights. It's really a fast and effective way to work when you're using photoreal elements.